exactly. <coughs> it's a really fun way to work, I think. So, so, so that's what's going to attract me to film. So you just mentioned film and television, but uh, uh, after you after your success with Joker, you also did a video game. You worked with Electronic Arts Music on Battlefield 2042. Um, how was that experience, and what made you choose a video game? Um, well, the, you know, the offer came up, and and I was curious about the medium. So, because um, I'd never I'd never worked in a, a computer game before and, and and I don't play computer games at all so I know nothing <laughs> about <laughs> computer <laughs> games <laughs> and uh, you know the only my only connection with computer games is you know through my son what 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 he's playing which is not battlefield <laughs> thankfully <laughs> <laughs> yet <laughs> but um but I yeah I just I thought I thought it was I'm I'm just kind of hopelessly curious as a as a person and I and I feel like you know it's just interesting to try out the different um, different mediums uh, just to to you know see what what resonates and um, and I think you know battlefield I I think it was it was interesting because there was um, there was a very strong uh, climate change awareness aspect to to that uh, this production that I that I um that I feel very strongly about. So I was I was quite um, keen on on bringing that aspect to to a large audience and to bringing uh, bring up you know those questions to a larger audience and um, and it was cool. You know I l I learned a lot. It was it was really cool. But I I, I felt through that that that. You know, video games is probably not my medium because there's. I d I felt how much I need the storytelling, mm. you know, uh, through that process, and I, I was like, it's you know, technically it's really fun to work in this medium because there's there's a lot of things that you can do, uh, which which are interesting, like you know how you how you're working without the timeline and and like how you can uh, translate the kind of technical. Um, you know p processing power like into the into the music it's quite interesting what you can do in real time with with um with uh, uh these p the processing power that co the computers have today but i th yeah i th i think it it will probably not be my my main my main uh, medium of <laughs> working in the future but it was cool to try out you it's know it's an amazing score and it got you an SCL awards uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 no, it, was, it was fun um so 2019 and uh, mm -hmm. early 20 was a super successful year for you, obviously, with Chernobyl, uh, with Choker, and you basically got any award in our industry that one could get. Uh, for Choker, you came on very early, you and, and you know your music, you know, Todd Phillips used your music on, on set. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix was uh, uh, influenced by your music. You know, we all know the bathroom scene. But also your current project, Tar and Women Talking, you came on board very early with Tar. I think you said a, a year and a half you worked on that film, uh, which is pretty incredible and I feel like a luxury also. Uh, but it's something that you, I think, really want. And can you talk a bit why it's so important for you to come on board early and be involved in the production early on? Mm, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a it's a curse and a blessing, really, because um, because obviously, you know, it takes seventy two times longer to work in this way than it does <laughs> when you just like you know get an edit and, and do the music. So, and the fee is the same. You know, <laughs> you're not making any more money when you work in this way. But um, but I think for me, creatively, it's just it's so much more fulfilling. Um, because I have done both. Like I, I, I mean, I have, you know, come come pretty late on with and worked on an edit. And when you, you know, when you have temp music, and I think inevitably, wha when you're working, uh, when you're working into a tempo and uh, a landscape that has already been set, it's very hard to alter that in any way because the um, the filmmakers will be very accustomed to you know the the tempo that they've already been editing to so 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 i think in most cases you end up you know following the tempo in, in some way but if you if you start early the great thing is is that you can 
I mean, if if you start really and resonate with with uh, um, with uh, filmmakers and uh, and and the whole working process, um, you you can kind of just be a part of the the like the really the strands of the DNA of the of the film much much earlier, you know, and and you can be a part of setting the the tempo of the film, the tempo of the acting, and the and the mood of the you know the the whole scenario. If if the music is is uh, is there from 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 the get go because um, and then everything can kind of work together in a tandem like nothing is kind of like chasing after after another element you know everything is just kind of going going in the same in the same pace and then you're really a part of the whole yeah just like the whole the whole storytelling process mm -hmm. you know um, uh, because I think when you when you're just working from a director's cut or whatever it's just you know you're 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 kind of just like the last piece that can change the most in the <laughs> in the least amount of time <laughs> and it's just I, f I find it creatively it's not it's just not as um, fulfilling for, for me you know A and is that something that you as an artist request when you um, when you pick your projects or do you is it somehow that you like the filmmakers like you know uh, Todd Phillips but then also now Todd Fields and Sarah Pauli they kind of know that and they come to you also and they're open to that process yeah I guess uh, I, I guess I just have somewhat of a reputation that I work like this now and I, I think that the people are kind of aware of that so I so I normally just I, I get uh, asked to join projects from like from the script stage on and, and I think um, which is which is really great, you know, and 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 um, and I really I really love that, and um, yeah. So so I, I guess that's just yeah lucky. <laughs> 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 but it's it's really it's also really great because because um, yeah, th this was the same thing with women talking as well. Like you know, the music was a really big part of the uh, also like early on of the. Um, of of the process, so they really added like the the whole added this really the tempo map to mm -hmm. the to the music, you know. So the music is kind of really leading the tempo of the of the edit, and and uh, I just think the the visuals and the um, and the music they just marry so much better. And even in that case, like you know, the discussions that I had with with Sarah were like. Um, she was so open to what I was saying that she, you know, she even took parts of our communication and put that in the script, you know. So, so there's like parts of how I felt about the story are actually now like written in, this <laughs> in, is the, awesome. in the script. And I, I just think it's 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 nice because it makes it such a, you know, it makes it such a strong collaboration, you know, because it's it's you know I'm not just doing the music; I'm also like a part of the part of the whole story, you know. Let's dive into those two movies a little bit without giving away too much of the spoilers because I think a lot of uh, people here haven't seen the movies yet as, uh, as uh, they're not released yet. Um, so one film is Tar, directed by uh, uh, Todd Fields, uh, starring Kate Blanchett about uh, uh, the conductor-composer Lydia Tar uh, and her life, her career, and kind of also her downfall. And then the second movie is a Woman Talking, uh, directed by Sarah Polly, uh, about uh, real life events, pretty recent events about an isolated community where um, uh, the women of the community were drugged and raped by, uh, by the m males of the community. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Tar, if you can, uh, you know, Tell us kind of why you took on uh, the the project, and uh, how you were involved also early on with uh, Todd and with Kate Blanchett, and if you can also talk a little bit about the concept album that came out on Deutsche Grammophon uh, as a compendium to the film. Yeah. Uh, when Todd Field and Kate Blanchett approach you uh, with the music. Uh, no, with a, with a film about music, it's really hard to say <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 so um, yeah, it was it was quite um, really quite a special project because it's it's not just like a film about music; it's it's a film about the process of making music, right? So it's not in the film. 
uh, she's she composing music, she's she's uh, rehearsing music, and, and she's communicating about music, but we never see the final concert, we never see the final anything, you know, it's all, it's all just like the process, like sh how she's writing, how she's rehearsing, and, and um, the, uh, you know, the, the ups and the downs that, that, that come with that process, you know, and, and I, I obviously find this process, you know, unbearably fascinating, <laughs> 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 you know, which is, uh, I guess, lucky because I've dedicated my life to this <laughs> process. And I, for one, <coughs> I'm also probably more interested in the process of making music than I am about the final outcome. Like I'm not super, like I said before, like I'm not super interested in, 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 you know, kind of like show off the concertos and, and you know, st standing on a stage and, you know, look at me, you know, I've just like, I'm, I'm really not interested in that. I'm, I've I find it much more, I find it much more interesting, like what happens when you're practicing by yourself, like what happens in rehearsals, what happens in the communication that you have with, with your, with your fellow musicians and, and, uh, and I think that's really where the, where the juice of the music happens, right? Because it's like, you know, you you maybe write the piece and and y you know you're rehearsing it with with uh, with with the musicians and in the beginning the you know the it's just the kind of the bare bones of of the music and then the more you rehearse the more you communicate the more you start to feel into the into the music like that's where the music really starts to happen I think and that's really the interesting part for me. And then the concert or the recording or whatever, it's just like, you know, the, the very tip of the, of the iceberg because, um, you know, there's all this backstory that's happened that, that, that's so beautiful. And this film is, well it's about a lot of things, this film, it, so it, it touches on, on a vast array of, of uh, subjects. But, um, uh, but this aspect specifically what w was what drew me in and what, what I find like so, so fantastically interesting. And, and, uh, and to get to dive into that process with, with such wonderful artists as, as Todd Field and, and Kate Blanchett was just an absolute privilege because, um, I mean, if, um, and you, you'll, you'll see her in the movie. I mean, she's just phenomenal in this, in this movie. She's just absolutely mind-blowing. And the way that she, you know, just like went into like fearlessly just studied composing and, and piano playing and, and uh, you know, she so she is com conducting Mahler Five <laughs> in the film, you know, which is pretty, it's pretty spectacular, I think. And, and, um, and the whole depth of, 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 of her performance is just phenomenal. So, so I really, I really got to dive into, into it with her, like what it is to compose music and how it feels and, and uh, uh, how it, you know, looks like and and uh, what what happens in that in that process and and that was just wonderful. So, and and o obviously, like in the because uh, I I write the music that she's writing in the film, uh, and I also wrote um, the music to to accompany the um, the whole setup of the film. So we basically uh, from the very beginning. Uh, we uh, Todd Field and I we we tempo map the whole script so we kind of set a we set a BPM for for the main characters like how they were like the pace that they were walking the pace that they were operating and and I wrote music to accompany that those those tempos that they could then like listen to and they could act to uh, um, and this is music that we actually never hear in the film um, like the the audience never hears this but the, the all the filmmakers are. You know, we're in the same, we're in the same tempo. <laughs> we're the feeling that feeling the music, and I, and I thought that was really important because the um, when you're writing music, it's it's like the it's an like an internal situation, right? You you feel the music internally uh, first, and that's something that's very hard to uh, translate into. Uh, into like a visual or, or audible medium because it's not. It's it's like this invisible inner tempo that you're experiencing when you're when you're writing, and then this kind of I'm I'm sure you all know this like this obsessive like it just like goes round and round <laughs> in your head and no one realizes what's kind of just like on on a loop in your in your head. And I thought it was important that we had this 
the, the the filmmakers like that we had this this that we were on the same page with this kind of inner temple and that we could sense that that like inner music and in the um in the acting and I think that was really interesting how that how that came out because it kind of well hopefully translates in, into the um into these kind of invisible strands of, of the music before it becomes sounds and starts moving the moving the like this 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 the inner the inner process in it. So so I thought it was uh, uh important and just really exciting, you know, for a project like this where where there is so much music in it, but there's so much music that you never get to hear in its entirety, and there's never, you know, there's so much music behind it that you don't really see in the in the film, and because in the film she is working on a, a, a release for a Deutsche Grammophon that she never finishes. I thought it was just really exciting that we that we actually that we would release the the record for her in uh, the parallel universe of our reality, and and yeah. that we have this concept album that that um that accompanies the film and, and kind of lives in a separate in a separate universe to to, uh, to to the film so that's that's yeah that's the story of the of that album it's just fascinating because i i i, I, d I don't know other composers where you know the the process the music informs the storytelling the acting you know it, it all it's really a community it's really a, a real collaboration where all the elements inform each other and you know it, it I think it was a little bit on choke about on tar it's like massive now and and it's really beautiful and fascinating for me to see yeah yeah it's it's really it was a really cool process it was really a lot of fun it was it was a lot of fun but funnily you don't really um you don't hear it that much in the film because it, uh, like you know when you when you see the film you'll understand but i mean you don't really hear <laughs> any music so people find that very confusing like where's the score so the score is kind of like this invisible layer that sits under the whole uh, the whole story but but i promise you it's there <laughs> you'll probably you'll probably go to the cinema and be like there's no music like i've been seeing it <laughs> but but there's actually like it's in there we counted the <laughs> minutes and the percentages <laughs> i'm kind of sure <laughs> but i've had this conversation and it annoys like a lot of people We're like i've heard people to be like yeah what what the hell is she saying about this concept while you live next to Elker and Marley, like who the hell does she think that she is you know which i find kind of funny but because uh it's just <laughs> it's just a gap sure <laughs> i mean obviously you can't hear the music but but um but i think that's the that's the beauty of music like you don't even you don't even need to hear it to feel it right it can it can just affect you in such a strong way without you even kind of realizing what, what what's going to your ears like y y because music it goes, it's going to go to your body whether you like it or not. Like you're going to feel music whether you close your ears or not. You're you're always going to feel the you know feel the music. So 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 I can I can you know I can literally promise you if you turn off the music in the in the film it's going to be a totally different situation. But it'll be confusing for you when you when you see it after hearing what I'm saying. <laughs> you just have to take my word for it. <laughs> Go with your feelings <laughs> when you watch the movie. <laughs> <laughs> but I just I think it's you know it's it's exciting to um, to uh, um, to try out different ways of there's just so many different ways of approaching music and uh, I think with f with film music like we have I think there's just so many different ways to go about it you know and I think we still have so much left to to explore and and you know try out and and. You know, it does. It, it doesn't have to be just because you know the, the, uh, it's music to a visual medium. It doesn't have to mean that it has to be a specific way. Like it can be just you know whatever you're feeling at that point for for that project. You know. Let's talk a little bit about your second project, Woman Talking. Uh, what drew you to that project? Um, well, Sarah Polly, uh, uh, the, the filmmaker for Women Talking, was was the the first thing that that, that drew me to to the film, and I, I think she is just wonderful. She's really, really, truly spectacular, and uh, I really like her work, and I really like her as a human being. I think she's she's really fantastic, uh, both both off and on collaboration so so it was a real it was a real treat to get to work with her and um 
and then I think the you know the story is just so it's just so heartbreaking you know on s on so many levels not like not only what actually happened like in 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 the story like what the n what the novel is is based on like these events are, are just so unfathomably uh crazy to me you know and i and i think it's i always think it's really uh important to to look at these kind of events to try to understand them and try to process them and try to kind of just take a stance to to what how you want to be as a human being, like what you really want to bring to to the world, you know. And I th I think it's important that we don't shy away from from subjects that are that are difficult, and and uh, I think it's important that we have a look at them. And I think also, um, you know, t on a, on a on another level, I think there's just so many aspects of the story that are just so incredibly um, uh, valid in our society today. And 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 you know, there's so many issues that we're seeing just for women's rights in the States, you know, just like this year, it's just unbelievable what's happening here. And then the backwards uh, movement that's, 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 you know, <laughs> happening to women's <laughs> rights here. It's just, it's just so unbelievable. And, uh, and I think this film really just reminds us of how incredibly important it is that we that we stand together and we stick together as a, as a community and, and not just as women but also just as people you know that we need to be on the same page about how we want to move forward as as a, as a society and how we want to treat treat our fellow people you know and um and i think this this film just really um is a is a very strong reminder ab ab about like how important that is to you know to to just stick together and and not kind of just work against each other because i think that's that's really that the poison of society today is like this you know hate speech and 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 division between uh you know the left and the right and the right and the wrong and the and the up and the down is just so unbelievably uh divided and i think you know it it, it it's just so unnecessary you know so i th i think this film just really is um yeah it's a great reminder about that and i i for one like learned a lot about this process myself because um Sarah was was very clear that the the music in this film needed to be a vehicle of hope and and forward movement. And I, when I started working on this film, I was like paralyzed with anger and sadness on on behalf of these women. So 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 I had a really hard time finding that hope within myself, you know. And uh, and then I just realized that it's like so applicable to 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 what's happening today. Like you know, do I what what am I gonna do today? Like, am I gonna be just like paralyzed with anger, or am I gonna find the courage to to move forward? You know, from where we are today, and uh, and working on this film just just uh, gave me a lot of courage. You know, that I that I didn't really have before. I think I think I was you know much more angry <laughs> before. <laughs> so so um, and I think you know anger can also be. Uh, important but i think in order to in order to move forward you have to kind of overcome the anger and you know to get the momentum to actually to make any like uh real changes you know and i think that's important uh, but i think it's important also here to uh, you know you had to go through the process it seems like you cannot go through hope without going through the anger and feeling what you feel in order to be authentic. Mm -hmm. I don't think you could have just said, oh, let's just do hopeful music now. No, exactly. Like That would have been so dishonest of me to, to do that because uh, that would have not been what I, what I felt, you know. So I, I, had to, I had to do a lot of self-work to, to just be able to do the score, you know, to, to be able to, to process these, these feelings um, and turn them into hope, you know. And not just uh, because at the same time, you know, I'm working on this and I'm like, you know, watching these events on the screen and I'm listening to a podcast on the radio about like a 10 year old that's been raped and her grandma is trying to get uh, get an appointment for an abortion the day before they overturn Roe v. Wade. 
and she is unable to get an abortion. This 10 year old has just been raped and this is happening at the same time that I'm writing this core and I'm, I'm just like so angry, you know, it's just so unfathomable. And, but we have to, we have to just make sure that we don't get stuck here, you know. Um, you just mentioned that, you know, you had to, you know, obviously also, you know, step back and personally, you know, work through all these emotions and uh, can you talk a little bit about your processes? Because to me, you are one of the most grounded people I know. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, how do you, how do you step away from kind of this whole, also, you know, that like when you score and the whole business and deadlines and you know, make sure you're grounded, you find inspiration. I know you meditate also, you love nature. Uh, how, do you, how do you go about that and how do you also find balance and self-care? Mm. Yeah, that's super important. It's super, super important for me. Um, I, have to be, uh, I have to be quite uh, rigid with my schedule, pretty much. So um, I basically have like a routine that I that I do on a on a daily basis that that um, I just know if I, if I do a certain amount of things in a certain order, I'm pretty good. <laughs> you know that I'm just like okay, today's gonna be pretty. <laughs> today's gonna be pretty good. <laughs> so um, so I'm kind of boring. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just like I follow a pretty, pretty rigid, uh, rigid schedule, and I I don't go out much. You know, I, I'm I'm pretty uh, I'm a you know I, I love being at home, but but um, so for me it's important to um, to have a a, a connection with my with my body and my joints and my ligaments and and my mind and and my breath and because uh, I found that um. The, the stiffer I am in my body, the, the stiffer uh, I am. Well, with anything really, you know, uh, especially when you're when you're trying to create something and you and you have to have a, a some sort of um, you know there has to be a, s a sense of, of flow and, and freedom in, in your in your mind. And I find that the the more freedom there is in my joints, the more freedom there <laughs> is in my <laughs> mind, basically. And I think it's I think it's pretty uh, it's pretty basic. And I found that that. Um, that yoga for me is just like the the magic key to to finding that connection and and uh, so basically I, I wake up every morning and I and I do yoga and I connect to my my body and then I uh, meditate and then I you know I get my son ready for school and then I and then I practice and then I I, I have to kind of practice both uh, my voice and the cello like th this is my perfect day basically <laughs> 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 I'll have lunch and then I'll you know spend a few hours creating whatever I'm I'm creating and then I'll pick up my son at four and uh, you know most most days I'll take him to football training and, and uh, then I'll cook dinner <laughs> that, that's it but I I found that. Um, yeah, I, I just like you know, lots of trial and error, definitely with this uh, uh, with this schedule. But and and I, I look to a lot of different uh, um, artists that I that I really uh, love, and and I found that it was a kind of common um, nominator <laughs> between a lot of the people that I really liked was were a lot of these same uh, these same methods of of uh, finding fluidity and, and, and flexibility so 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 I kind of yeah refined that that uh, this this routine uh, as, as yeah I go got inspiration from from like lots of other artists and I was like oh it seems to be working for them there, mu <laughs> there must be something there a and you just mentioned also your son and uh, you know you have a family and I, that's something we often hear at the Alliance you know the balance between family and uh, uh, being a parent and uh, and work and deadlines uh, do you find that difficult or is it easy for you to prioritize to always prioritize family um, well yeah I don't know if easy is the right word um, <laughs> you know it can be, <laughs> it can be it can be complicated you know <laughs> Um, I've never had a babysitter for once, so 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 uh, uh, you know there was a lot of times where um, where I 
you know, because of the time difference. Also, I'm mostly working with people here in the states, and and uh, so so a lot of my meetings like happen, you know, around bedtime or after bedtime, and and, and uh, so a, l- <laughs> a lot of my meetings in the evenings. I was also simultaneously like you know cleaning the toilet and, uh, you know, <laughs> doing <laughs> laundry, <laughs> you know, and stuff like that. Don't tell anyone that I've had a meeting with. But, but um, you know, so you, you kind of just, I don't know, you, you find ways of, of, of making it work somehow. And, and uh, I've, I've just, I think, you know, m- my son is obviously the most important thing in my life. Like, he's, he goes, he has top priority no matter what, you know, and, and, uh, uh, and I think, um, I think there are m- way more pros than cons of of like having a child and and uh, um, and being an artist and than not like having tried both. Like I was an artist for a long time before I <laughs> before I had my son, and I feel like I feel like there's so many things that um, that opened up for me emotionally when I when I had my son because I I, th- I think my my emotional spectrum just like <laughs> like exploded and and uh, and that's something that I wouldn't have missed for the world and I, th- I think that that um, the the benefits that that has brought to my music way uh, you know are, are way bigger than the the complications there are from like doing laundry and, and cleaning the toilet as at the same time as you have a deadline, you know. I th- I think you know you you'll figure out the practicalities as as you go. But but um. But I'm really I'm really grateful for for him and having you know that having have the opportunity to be his mom and. Uh, you know, I but at the same you, you know you just you just do your best, you know, and that's all you can. I think someone someone uh, um was talking about being like a, a good enough mom you know being a good enough parent and i think that that really goes a long way because you're you're also like when you when you become a parent you're also signing yourself up for like a lifelong guilt guilt trip <laughs> because <laughs> you're just like you're never gonna do things good enough like you know it's it's just there's always something you could be doing better like you know the the, the all these new methods of like whatever like nutrition or or you know bedtime routines or, or like you know whatever but but you just you ju- you just do your best and and uh, and I think it's also just like so it's so cool to to um for to get to s- watch him grow up like in 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 this environment as well where he gets to be a part of you know creating and and taking and taking a music and and uh, film and and you know he's he's really interested so it's it's really fun to speak to him about he's ten now and and uh, it's really fun to speak with him about about you know his 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 way of seeing music and and film and and he's kind of he's become my um yeah my my uh, uh, my go to consultant <laughs> <laughs> so you're like is that good or how do you feel about it <laughs> totally I'll totally think it's he is like he is brutally honest <laughs> he'll be the first person to say like mom that is so shit <laughs> like you can't even what are you Oh, he's like, Mom, this has no space for any interesting music. Like, why would you even consider that? And I'm like, <laughs> well, like oh, okay, <laughs> that's awesome. You know, it's amazing how how you know this this person just turns you know turns out. It's it's really it's really fun. It's awesome. Yeah. And he is such an alive and curious boy. It's yeah, like it's amazing. such a reflection of you, also. Yeah, I think. he's amazing. Um, so you mentioned the time difference, uh, meaning you live in Berlin. Uh, we always get the questions from members, is it important to move to Los Angeles to have a career? And I think you're an example that not necessarily, uh, but how do you feel about it? You know, if, uh, you know, if uh, young composers would ask, should I move to LA to, to, to get work, to make a career? Mm. Um. I'm so shit with career questions. I have no idea. <laughs> 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 I really have. That's my that's my honest answer. I have no idea. But um, I mean, for for me, it was. LA is just you know I I think it's very fun coming here, but, LA is is really not my place. 
<laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> I mean, even though I have, you know, people that are practically family, it's, it's, uh, I find, um, you know, creatively for me, it's just, it's just not my climate, you know, it's, it's I'm, I'm from Iceland, so <laughs> like, you know, I'm as far away <laughs> as it could possibly be from this climate. So, um, I just, I really like creating in the, in the dark, like I, because uh, I grew up with like, you know, uh, anytime there's a sun, you know, the sun is out, you have to go out and use the sun, you know, that's what we <laughs> say in Iceland, so I'd never get any work done here, I'd be out using the sun <laughs> every day, <laughs> you know. <laughs> But um, you know, so but that's you know that's just me. I, I think um, I don't know. You know, I th I think there's so many there's so many ideas about like the right way of of doing things, and I think you know, at the end of the day, it's it's uh, you know it's 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 music, it's art, it's it's creativity. I don't I don't think there really should be like a right way to do anything. You know, I th I think I think if you just if you're just creating from a place that's uh, that's honest to you, I, th I think that's the best you you can do for for um, for yourself <laughs> mostly. You know, I think it's a much more it's much more ful fulfilling uh, if you just like are really honest with what makes you uh, resonate as as a as a person and as an artist. And I think you should you should you should always try to work towards that much more than trying to work towards any like norms of the way you're supposed to do things you know because because you know the 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 way that you're supposed to work you know, maybe works for, for works for someone else but not for you and you know you're trying to if you're trying to fit in a in a mode that doesn't work for you you know you're you're not going to have a very good time i think and uh, and i really think it's important to to enjoy the work you're doing you know i think it's super important because i think like in the in the film industry you know it can be really stressful it, c it can it, it can like it takes a lot of time all the, the project it's it's, it's it can be very demanding and, and especially for for composers like you you know you're the last you're the last end of the chain you're like the you know it's literally you're the person that can change the most about what you're doing in the in the least amount of time <laughs> at the last you know the last end of the end of the um production so so that time can can uh, can be very hectic you know and and uh, i think the more that you are really in invested yourself in, into into what you're doing the more that you love it um yourself the easier it it, it is to to get through those periods, you know, but if you're, if you're going into that, you know, stress and, and demand with something that you, that you don't really like, it's, it's, it's just going to be a lot more boring and, and hectic, you know. So, you know, if, if you love LA, then, you know, move to LA, definitely. <laughs> 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 but, but, you know, I, th I think there's, you can, you can, do music from wherever like I, I and I think especially now the, the beauty of, of 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 what the pandemic has has kind of taught us is that you can you can do a lot more um virtually uh than 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 I think we believed that we mm -hmm. could do before so that's I think that's really fantastic for for musicians specifically because because you just you can do so much from from home or, or you know wherever you are so i think that's made things a lot easier for for us so yeah thank you that was good career advice <laughs> 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 i'm so shit that i'm no you're it. awesome <laughs> <laughs> no, i've never known the right way to go about anything <laughs> But maybe that's what it is, that everyone has to carve out their own path. There is no magic path, you know, it's being yeah. authentic, uh, which you do, you know, and, and finding your own path. And I think that's kind of... Yeah, I, th I think, you know, I think music is very, it's, it's really transparent. Like, I think you can really, you can hear it really fast if, if, if um, the music comes from a place of, of like, true resonance and, and honesty. I think, I think you can... You can hear the, uh, yeah. You can you can, like, pick that up pretty pretty fast. And I think w something that I've that I've been thinking about a lot, especially like in the last few years, is the um, the difference between like 
content than substance. You know, I think I think it's something that we kind of need to be aware of, especially today, because there's just so much content right now. You know, and there's there's just you know with films and series and and like you know videos that have to go with this medium that has to go on this social media on that time because and it's just like it's there's so much content and and it's just like you're constantly kind of running after the the next content situation you're supposed to be providing for that and at the end of the day you're like well who really cares about the content <laughs> if it doesn't have any substance you know so i think the more focus you put on the substance uh the content just can you know do whatever because there's going to be a new you know there's going to be you know twitter's dying so <laughs> there's going to be a new th there's going to be a new twitter next week <laughs> i'm sure you know with a pink tick or hopefully whatever. of more substance <laughs> yeah yeah exactly no i just i just feel it's super important to to you know for us us to be constantly because it's 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 really easy to get caught in this like whirlwind of of just like what's expected of you and you're like oh i'm just catching up with with emails or b social media or whatever and and just that we constantly just check in with ourselves like okay wh where am i am i in line with what i really want to be doing is is this is this like on my on uh, is this something that i want to have on my path or is it not and you just have to constantly you know pretty much as a part of the routine like you know between the yoga and the meditation just like you know set the set your alignment straight and just say like you know is is what i'm doing content or, or substance you know that's a good question to ask actually you know i, I think in everything it's not only in as an artist but in life and, and where what do i want to spend my time on yeah. is it is it worth it is it something that uh, that aligns with who i am or Absolutely. or is it just because there's just so much noise today. It's so easy to just, you know, get lost in the in the noise, you know. So I think we just we just have to be super aware. We just have to come back again and again, you know. Which is just, you know, something that you learn in the meditation practice for example is just like coming back again and again. You just you're beginning again with every, you know, with every breath. And I think that that also goes with with, you know, the aligning yourself in a way that that you truly want to be uh, moving towards you know because it's easy to lose sight of it it's really easy which uh, i was just thinking we should probably have meditation classes or a meditation circle for the yeah. alliance and you know That's start that idea. in 2023 uh -huh. um yeah. unfortunately we've come to an uh, to the end of, uh, of this uh, lovely conversation thanks for being with us uh uh Thanks everyone on like there's three cameras. So we've uh, oh we've done our first YouTube live for the Alliance for Women Film Composers today. Yeah. So <laughs> um, so hopefully this will go to audiences in Europe, on the East Coast, everywhere in the world. Um, here in Los Angeles, we have another 45 minutes or so to hang out. If you have questions to Hilder, please uh, feel free. Uh, I just want to also announce uh, we have our annual holiday party here in Los Angeles on November 28. The invite will go out next week, so please save your date. Um, thanks again to Silent Zoo for having us. Uh, uh, I love this space. I haven't been here before. And um, <laughs> If you want a little tour, if you want to look at the control room, you know, will and hold and are happy to show you around and and uh, answer any questions you might have and um, i also want to mention hildo is on uh, our advisory board for the alliance for Women film composer because we talked about community and i know community is really important to you so thank you about that and all the um, work you do and again thanks for being here and for this conversation